And we begin on this Thursday by following breaking news in Henry County. A gunman holding a 16-year-old boy hostage inside a home after shooting two police officers. They are in the hospital. So this started when a woman went to check on her sister. She says she found blood in the garage and immediately called 911. This standoff now entering seven hours. Mm. Police are still trying to convince the gunman to let this boy go. To prevent anyone else from getting hurt, police evacuated the neighborhood around the home on Eagle Way. This is in Stockbridge. Right now, no one is being allowed in. We have team coverage for you tonight at the home and at Grady Hospital where the office are recovering. And we begin with Latasha Givens in Henry County. Latasha. Well, seven hours later, Cheryl and Jeff, it remains a very tense scene. If you look behind me, you can see there's a heavy police presence still here at the Eagle Ridge subdivision. This is one of the entrances leading to the home where that hostage situation is happening and where those officers were shot this morning. It all started with a call for help from a woman at the home. Police say the two officers responded and made contact with the woman, but as they tried to enter the house, they were immediately shot inside. Police say one officer was hit in the hip area and the other in the torso. The other officer was shot in the hand. Investigators say neither officer fired back at the gunman. Now, police have not released the names of the two officers who were injured and being treated at Grady, but we spoke with one man who identified himself as a relative of one of those officers, and he says his son-in-law was a veteran. Army sorry. veteran. Army veteran. Two tours in Iraq, Afghanistan. And he's been on the force for a while, and it's just a terrible accident, a tragedy, not a tragedy, but an accident. And police tell us both officers are in their 30s and have worked with the SWAT unit and they've been with the department for about seven years. Cheryl Jeff, back to you. Latasha in Henry County. Latasha, thanks for the information. All right, let's go to Jennifer Bellamy. Jennifer, you talked to the family of the 16 year old being held hostage inside the home right now. At one point, the gunman was texting out to his family members. That's correct. This hostage situation going on for about seven hours now. Family members watching, waiting, hoping for the best outcome possible as they continue to wait for new updates from the law enforcement presence that is out here. Very large presence that is as well. That 16 year old still being held hostage and police say a possible female victim as well. This all started earlier this morning around 1046 when a woman went to check on her sister at this home in the Eagle Ridge neighborhood in Stockbridge. She saw blood in the garage and called police. Two officers, as you heard, responded and they were shot as they forced their way inside and police have been working to communicate with this other man inside the home ever since. Officers say that man said he would let the teen go, but to our knowledge, to the information that we have so far, that has not yet happened. We spoke with a family member before who she was likely taken to be closer to the scene to reunite with other family members as they wait for more information. Her son is in that too. My cousin's son is in that too. He had a gun up to his head. They are in communication with him. We have multiple agencies here that are assisting us. We're communicating with the individual. And Cheryl, as you mentioned, some of those family members did tell us that other family members were communicating at least at one point earlier in the day with that man inside the home. His message through those family members was for police to stand down. Now we know that has not happened. You can see this presence still out here right now at this hour. Police have said that they were aware or they believe there were some long guns inside that home, but it's not clear if those were used in the earlier shooting. Jennifer, I guess on the one hand, it's encouraging that there's been some communication, but seven hours in, as you mentioned, no result of the communication. But in those texts, any indication if the woman who is said to be inside is okay or if someone else might be injured in that home? We don't have any other information about what those communications have been from the, the person inside with family members other than them asking uh, for police to stand down. And we don't have any other information from police on what those communications have been. and efforts to resolve this situation either. All right, a long day for the family and for the police department. Jennifer Bellamy, thanks a lot. And this shooting today marks the second and third officers to be shot this week alone in Metro Atlanta. John Sherrick is in downtown Atlanta. He is at Grady Hospital where all three injured officers are currently being treated. John. This place, Grady Hospital, this place of suffering and tragedy and also healing and triumph, Grady Hospital once again caring for three police officers shot in the line of duty, one on Monday and two more today.
The first Henry County officer to arrive at Grady Hospital arrived on an ambulance, every available Atlanta police officer blocking all surrounding streets to keep them clear. The Georgia State Patrol shutting down I-75 northbound for the officer's ambulance. The second officer arrived by helicopter and moments later, a police chaplain rushed inside to comfort the officers and their families and fellow officers, the wounded officers from Henry County, but here everyone claims them as their own. It's just terrible to hear. It's I mean, it's terrible. awful. I mean, you know, these these police officers risk their lives for us every day, and you know, it's just it's scary to hear. Emory University students Ben Miller and Josh Woolley frustrated that more than two dozen Georgia law officers have been shot in the line of duty so far this year. Now, two more. There's better ways to solve the problems than attacking our police officers. And a third Metro Atlanta police officer shot in the line of duty this week is still at Grady. Union City officer Jerome Turner shot Monday while he was running after a suspect. Fellow officers maintaining their vigil here with Officer Turner and his family. Vidalia Hayes expecting a baby, worried about the world that awaits her child, worried for the officers. I feel for their family. I do pray for this, these two cops that do pull through. Just love and pray for them. Three police officers, three sets of families, all here tonight at Grady. Back to you. All right, John, thank you very much for the update. We appreciate it. At least four other law enforcement officers have been shot in Henry County since January of 2018. Last December, Henry County Police Officer Michael Smith killed during a struggle with a man at a dental office. The month before, juvenile justice officer Shadricka Miller was shot in the hand while transporting a teen to a detention center. She survived. And in February 2018, Locust Grove Police Officer Chase Maddox and Henry County Deputies Michael Corley and Sid Calloway were shot while serving a warrant. Officer Maddox was killed. Both deputies did survive. We streamed our special coverage on our 11 Live Facebook page, also on 11Live.com. Thousands of you were following along, sending in well wishes for all involved as soon as we were on the air. So many messages of support, prayers for a full and fast recovery. And we noticed a lot of questions, too. Why are there so many of these officer shootings in our city? We'll keep following this story closely so you can download the 11 Live app. We will send notifications and updates as soon as we get new information.